Hi students, this is Dr. Samriya here to explain you 17 CV 61 Construction Management and Entrepreneurships Module Number 2. So the topic for today's discussion is Materials Management. Now let us move on to the video. The topic that we are going to see today is Materials Management. In any construction company, there are lots of materials that are being used. Hence, a system for proper planning and controlling is very, very important. Why is such a uh, system required? If you see that, it is to ensure that the correct quality and quantity of materials are obtained and that too in a timely manner at a reasonable cost and also those materials must be available at the point of use when there is a requirement. So doing all these things comes under the topic material management. So now let us see the aims of material management. So the aims are to get the right quality, right quantity of supplies at the right time, at the right place, for the right cost are all the aims of material management. What are the objectives of material management? So there are two objectives. Uh, the first one is the primary objective and the second one is the secondary objective. So in primary objective, uh, efficient materials planning, buying or purchasing, procuring and receiving and then storing and inventory control, supply and distribution of materials and last quality assurance. All these things are the primary objective of material management. So if you see the secondary objective, efficient production scheduling to make or buy decision. See if some materials the company can produce in their own company itself, but sometimes it would be economical and time saving to buy those uh, materials. So that decision can be made only if a materials management system is there in place. Then to prepare specification and standardization of materials. So in big, big construction companies, they don't go for different varieties of cement. They stick to one certain specification and standard type of cement. And even if that stock is over, they try to get the same specification and standard again. So that is possible only when material management is in place. The next point is to assist in product design and development. Next, forecasting demand and its quantity. So sometimes what will happen is we will not know when the materials are getting used up. So in such scenario, the companies cannot wait till the new materials are going to come back. So what they will do is they will forecast already how much material is there with them. And based on this, they will forecast how much will be required and when it will be required. So these things can be done only when material management is in place. Then quality control of the purchased materials. Quality control is very, very important because we don't know from where things are coming from. So when the materials are coming, there is a possibility of having it adulterated. So only when materials management system is in place, we can find out whether the material is adulterated or not. So the next point is material handling. So how and when we have to receive the materials and store them should be uh, clear before even ordering the materials. So that is possible only when material management is in place. Then use of value engineering and developing skills of workers in material management. And finally, smooth flow of materials in and out of the company is possible only when material management is in place. What is the importance of material management? See, material management is actually a very, very important thing in any construction industry. So the first importance is lower prices for materials and equipments are assured. So just imagine that you have got an assignment and that assignment is going to use up 20 A4 sheets. So if you are going to, going to be smart, what will you do? You will go buy those 20 plus 2-3 extra A4 sheets and keep it with you before itself and start writing the assignment. So that is materials management there. Just imagine that you have not done materials management and you suddenly run out of paper and you don't have any extra paper to write. So what will you do now? You'll have to go and get it from a store. So just imagine it's a Sunday and all the stationeries are closed. What will you have to do? You will have to go for longer distances to get the same quality of A4 sheets or you will have to adjust with some low quality of paper. So can you understand the difference how lower prices are guaranteed if you do proper material management? 
So the next point is faster inventory turnover. See, inventory turnover is a very, very important topic in materials management. So what does inventory turnover do? It measures the number of times an inventory is used in a year. So it is actually done to check if a business has more inventory than its sales or it has less. The next point is less duplication of efforts. Next, reduced material obsolescence or you can say reduced wastage. The next point is improved supplier relationship. When you're going to get a thing again and again from one person, that person may start giving you more discounts also. So that is nothing but improved supplier relationship. The next one is better records. Record keeping is a very, very important aspect of your materials management. So that is possible only when you have a proper step of material management. And also better interdepartmental cooperation, like the estimation department, the site, everything, there should be a proper coordination. So that is possible only when you have materials management in place. So what is the advantages of material management? Better accountability, better coordination, then better quality of materials are ensured. It helps in decision making of the management because it is the central point for materials related queries. Then developing ethical and moral standards in an organization. When you are going to expect a very quality product when you are buying something as a raw material, that means when you expect something with good quality, you will have to give out something which a which has a good quality. So that ethical and moral standard comes because of material management only. The next one is maximize company profit, improve customer service, enhanced communication and improved, improved quality of staff. Functions of material management are very important question for your examination. So there are 10 important functions of material management. So number one is planning. So in the planning stage, identifying estimation of quantities, defining specification, forecasting requirement and locating the right source of procurement is done. So the next stage is procurement. Once you plan what you want to buy, what you will be doing is you need to procure. So who does the procurement? The site planning engineer and the materials manager, both of them are going to go and visit the local markets to identify which shop gives a quality product at a reasonable price. So there will be few materials which the head office will be buying. So that will be either brought online or through other services. So the next function of material management is custody. So once you have placed an order, you will have to receive it, store it, and then also issue it to the people who are working with those materials. So that is nothing but custody. So warehousing is nothing but storing of the received materials. Then the next function is materials accounting. So the monitoring, monitoring the inflow of raw materials, stock, stock accounting, materials issued reports and returns accounting and material waste and wastage analysis. Everything is done in your materials accounting. The fifth point is transportation. See, proper care must be taken in the planning stage when raw or semi-finished materials are transported so as to avoid wastage. So the sixth point is inventory monitoring and control. It is important to check the amount of material present and where it is used and how much you will have to buy for in future. All these things is possible only when you have inventory monitoring and control. Seventh point is materials codification. When thousands of materials are used in any construction industry, a coding system is kept in place. So the codes may be numeric codes or alphanumeric codes. That is done so that if someone comes and say material number 23 is missing. So that means the person will go and see what is material number 23. He will understand it is one type of cement. There may be some 10 different types of cement used in the company. So they will understand which type of cement is missing and they are going to either get it or they are going to identify why that product is missing. So that is easier to be done when codification is done. Then the eighth point is computerization. So we use computers to do forecasting, planning, developing material specification, preparing statements, purchasing and inventory control. See nowadays for all these things there are lots of softwares and that comes under computerization.
So the ninth point is source development. So for any important material, you will have to have more than one source. Just imagine you are going to get cement only from one particular vendor. What happens is that vendor may sometimes cheat also. So in such a scenario, you will have to be ready with another vendor also so that when he cheats, you can change and get the material required for you without any disruption from the other vendor. So this um, alternate, alternatives are de developed in the source development. The tenth point is disposal. Old and used items of no economic value must be disposed of. So disposing doesn't mean just throwing them away. Even scraps will get you money for the company. So scraps dealer must be called and then all these items should be disposed of. Steps in material management. So the thing is, you're not going to just go to a shop, give them some few thousands and get the material immediately, put it in your truck and get it to your company. That is not possible when you have very big companies. So what the companies do is, they generally request for a quote from different types of vendors, like maybe for getting a particular type of cement, you can ask quotes for five to 10 companies. So now the companies will place their bids, like who uh, is going to give you at a what price that is called as the bids and during the bidding stage what happens is the company selects the proper type of quality and the price which is suitable for them in the bidding stage so the third point is release of purchase orders so once in the bidding stage the company decides from which vendor it has to purchase what they do is they leave purchase orders out so in purchase orders it, there will be the quantity and the time period by which these items must be uh, placed back in the company. So those things will be specified in the purchase order. So once the purchase order is received by the vendor, they uh, decide how the transporting is to be done. And once the transporting is done by the vendors, the receiving part is done by the company. So once the receiving is done, you know the next step, which is nothing but warehousing or there comes inventory. Problems in material management. See, when I say that you want to buy some 10 bags of cement in a construction company, there are going to be so many people involved in procuring and warehousing those 10 bags of cement. So there is possibilities of lots of problem being created. I just give an example of 10 cement bags, but just imagine thousands of materials being brought to the companies and if the proper uh, coordination among people is not there so what will happen there is a pro there, there is a, a possibility that the time may be delayed or the uh, cost is uh, more or something like that problems will be there so now let us see what are all the different problems that the companies face so the first one is the organization structure so if coordination and communication between the estimating department, R&D, purchasing department, plans and machineries department, if these are all not maintained at high level, then it may cause serious trouble. The communication gap may lead to a price raise or delay in time or anything else. Then the next point is procurement problem. So if you are not going to be alert and forecast the requirement beforehand, there will be a problem of availability of the materials, price rise, late deliveries, defects and storage problems also. So the third point is storage of materials. So materials require protection against theft and weather conditions. So if more items are brought by the company, at the same time, there's a possibility that the company may not have space to keep all the items. So in such a scenario, what the company will opt for is to buy a little bit of uh, amount of materials initially. And then once it is going to be used up completely, they will place order for the next set of items. So like that, a regular supply is uh, uh, maintained. So this is possible only when planning is done well in advance. The next point is security problems. So theft is a major concern. So theft can happen inside the company or while while in the transit also from the vendor to the company also. So once there is loss of materials, then it means that there is a financial loss to the company. The last point is availability in the market. 
Steady flow of materials throughout the project is very very essential for the project and this may be disrupted due to the market unavailability suddenly. So there may be any reasons for this market unavailability. So that must also be forecasted beforehand so that your project is not affected. So the last topic is inventory management. So what is inventory? It is a stock of physical assets of economic value. So it that may be material money or labor so inventory management means it is material money or labor and what is the stock of all these things within the company so but as we are concerned about materials so we will be studying the need for inventory and its control in the aspect of material management only so excess material which is not useful in sight can be stored in the inventory so before acquiring any new materials balance of previous purchases can be easily checked if you have an inventory control then damages to material which are uh, damages which happens during the transit or something can be brought to the notice of higher authorities so percentage of wastage also can be identified see there is a possibility that materials once you procure also may go waste there is possibility in all companies this happens but the percentage should be minimum so that you can find out if you have inventory control the last point is purchasing of material in stages as per the work can be managed so this explains materials management so with this i'll be finishing my video thanks for watching the video